Next on BYUSN, do the Cougars have a chance to win their bowl game if quarterback Jaron Hall can't play? And will it be more of an exodus or a welcoming in from the transfer portal for BYU football? With arms wide open. Under the soul line. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, December 6th. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. My transfer portal is always open for more friendship. So for more friendship? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. More just friendship. Bring in, just bring in more friends. Listen, in the TV biz, the transfer portal is always open, right? <laughs> okay, on today's show, we'll preview the New Mexico Bowl with the bowl game director. What are the activities like for fans, and what can you get involved in outside of the uh, the Breaking Bad Better Call Saul tour in Albuquerque, which I'd like to go on someday. What's the top bowl win in the independent era? Top five Tuesday delivers. Five wins, so easy to pick from those five. Taysom Mill gets a touchdown on Monday Night Football, and we begin the basketball fantasy draft, mixing it up with the format. That's later, but first, today's headlines. The New Mexico Bowl takes on primetime on Saturday, December 17th, slated for ABC 7.30 Eastern kickoff time. It slid due to some complications with the Las Vegas Bowl involving the Las Vegas Raiders and their game. Point is, BYU fans can watch the Cougars in primetime against SMU, and Coach Kalani Satake says the Mustangs have his full attention. So you see their team and what they've done, and they, they do it in all three phases. They're really well coached, and um, you know, they're explosive all over the place. I mean, I, I'm a defensive guy, so I always go look right at the offense, and the fact that they've scored 77 points in the game is scary, you know, but uh, looking forward to the matchup. First to 40 wins, the Cougars have their hands full. Typically, that's case. If you score 40, you, you, typically you win. But yeah, crazy. <laughs> Taysom Mill caught a touchdown for the Saints in the last second loss to the Bucks last night. That touchdown for Hill gives him nine career TD catches, making him the only player in the Super Bowl era mm. with nine plus TD passing, rushing, and receiving. Wild. How about that? Later in the game, Hill nearly had the game ceiling first down, but the ball was jostled loose on a would be catch. He had two catches for 35 and a touchdown, plus 21-yard pass, and three rushes for 10 yards. I saw summer Frank Gifford was the last guy to do that. Taysom Hill-esque. Wow. Pre-Super Bowl era. Yes, yes. Interesting. Tate Romney, BYU linebacker, announcing yesterday he will enter the transfer portal, and that number from BYU leaving continues to grow. He played in three games this year. His mom, Jenny, tweeted, been a BYU football parent for the past five years. Closing a chapter is hard, but change is also good. Excited for Tate's future. How am I going to bring up the Mormon colonies now if Tate's gone? You're not going to be able to. Dang it. And guess what? Gunner is done as well. Uh, peep, uh, the Romneys are done. Like the, We can read into this. Yes. If there was any Fair. speculation, oh, maybe Gunner's coming. No. Jen Romney's made it clear the Romneys are done at BYU, and I had as much confirmed to me before the Stanford game as well. Bummer about Gunner and Tate. Was hoping we'd see them next year. Hey, just moments ago, Christopher Brooks accepting an invitation to the Hula Bowl played in Orlando on January 14th. Women's Hoops plays at Utah State today in a battle of three and five teams. Cougars own the series lead 39 to four. Lauren Gustin, speaking of BYU women's basketball, the WCC Women's Hoops co-player of the week. Yeah. After putting up 16 points, 14 rebounds last week. You know, ho-hum. This is a double-double in all eight games this season and is number two in rebounds nationally. And women's volleyball stars Heather Nighting and Aaron Livingston are on the ABCA Pacific South All-Region team. Congratulations. All rise and shout. It is time for What's Trending. Will Jaron Hall play in the bowl game? That is the question for the Cougars as they get set for the Mustangs. We're thinking about a high ankle sprain. Don't know what the uh, prognosis is specifically. We know that Kalani Satake addressed the situation with Jaron yesterday. Will he play? Here's Coach Satake on his quarterback's current status. Jaron's banged up. I mean, you know, we'll... we'll... He's not out of the game, uh, and so when, once we know more, we'll, we'll let you guys know. Um, right now, the guys are you know, they're getting the reps are Kate Finnegan and, and um, Nick Billups and Sojay Mayava. So those guys are compete, and um, 
You know, and, and what I saw so far, I, I liked what all of them have done in, in our practice that, practices that we've had thus far. So I, uh, I think they have some really good coaching. I like the way A. Rod coaches them, and with Matt Mitchell, and so I, I think they'll be ready. If if, if if we need to, they'll be ready for the game. Hopefully, we can get Jaron through this and, and get him on the field. Jerem, what are BYU's chances if Jaron Hull cannot play quarterback against SMU in the New Mexico Bowl? That's a possibility here, clearly, from what Kalani yes. just said, by the way, yes. which concerns me. Um, you know, Jacob Conover's in the portal. Even if Jacob was playing, uh, BYU was having, wasn't having him throw much anyway. This feels like, Spence, if Jaron Hall can't play, that it's like the fourth quarter against Stanford where it's a lot of running. I don't like BYU's chances against this SMU offense if Jaron Hall can't play. I didn't like BYU's chances with injured Jaron Hall, you know, against Notre Dame. Now, that was a one-score game. BYU makes a play here or there, certainly there, but injured and, and even missing Jaron Hall. It's not the same BYU. Cade Finnegan has not suited up as the Cougar quarterback uh, for a snap quite yet. Um, he was in a boot a couple weeks ago, sprained his ankle the week of Boise State. He is a dude who's also injured should he be the starter. So even if Cade's the guy and Jaron can't play, we'll see in the next uh, 11 days here before the game. I don't like BYU's chances, and it's mainly because SMU's offense is so good and BYU's defense has struggled and been injured as well. A reminder that SMU is top 25 in, third down percentage, sixth in passing offense, red zone offense, scoring offense, total offense. A reminder, Tanner Mordecai, ninth in passing touchdowns, number one receiver in the country by yards per game in Rasheed Rice. That is all concerning. Uh, Kalani yeah. mentioned the 77 in a game against Houston. That wasn't in quadruple overtime, by the way. <laughs> they can light it up. They're 5-2 and two since October 14th, and the two losses are two-point game to Cincinnati, and they got blown out to Tulane. Those two were tremendous teams in the regular season. Guess what? Tulane's the New Year's yes, Six team. Yes, Tulane's in a New Year's Six bowl game. So you're telling me they lost one game that they may, you know, they should have lost to Cincinnati, and Tulane was the game they were definitely going to lose. This team's on fire outside of those two, and they almost beat Cincy. Played a one-score game with TCU for crying out loud. <sighs> Everybody did. Um, there, there were six of those. But if BYU can do what it did against Stanford, rush for 300 plus, plus, which is crazy. BYU did it twice this year, though. South Florida and Stanford, teams that play defenses that stunk. Maybe. But the Stanford offense is not going, didn't challenge BYU like the SMU offense will. So, honestly, straight up, I'm, I am very concerned if Jaron Hall is not healthy and can't play. I'm just, and it sounds like he's not going to be healthy regardless. Yeah, I'm just expecting him not to be able to play. I, I need to go there mentally because I don't want to have that letdown when bowl game day rolls around. <laughs> like, I just need to go there. So I'm just, I have, I have gone to the point where I'm like planning on Jaron Hall not playing. Cade Fennigan is the starter. And who knows perhaps. how healthy Cade Fennigan is because he was in a boot as of like 10 days ago. BYU's in trouble yes. in this game. Yes, it's okay to admit that. Your second string quarterback is in the transfer portal, gone. Your third string quarterback is dealing with an ankle issue of his own. And your starter, come on, like we got to be real. Like, for me, I got to prepare Let's get as, if real. as if he's not going to play in this game. Yeah. Like, and, and what risk is Jaron putting in if he does go to play? Like, it, does this help his draft stock if he plays in the bowl game and he's not healthy? And I, does it injure his ankle even more? Correct. He is too much risk. He has got to run in a 40 in three-ish months. Okay. He needs to be fully healthy, training. That all comes into account in this conversation. I just got it, yeah. So I'm, I have gone to the point where it's like, okay, uh, it's Cade Fennigan and Soljay Maiava and Nick Billups. Right? Those, those are the three quarterbacks for BYU. The situation okay, is if not that's the great. Case, it's I'll, not great. I'll be surprised if BYU wins. Okay. I want BYU to win. I'll be surprised. BYU's offensive line was challenged for the last three games against Boise State and Utah Tech and Stanford, and they answered the call. They did yeah. a really nice job. Totally. I expect BYU to implement a game plan like they had, not against Stanford per se, because... <laughs> Just hand the ball. Yes, yeah, exactly. And Stanford's defense is super porous. SMU, as bad as their defense is, I don't think they're as bad as Stanford's defense. But bad. They're but bottom yes. 25 and everything that matters. I expect BYU to implement a game plan like they had against ECU, which was clearly hold on to the ball as long as possible, try and establish a really, really solid ground game, and just meticulously work your way down the field. BYU is Air Force minus the option now. Yeah, yeah. 
BYU. Ken Niamatololo's greatest wish has finally come to pass. BYU's key to beating SMU is to have a game plan like they did against ECU. ECU was another high-scoring offense out of the AAC. And that game day, we went in saying, hey, it's another first to 40 scenario probably wins this game. But BYU significantly slowed the game down, had trouble stopping ECU's offense and getting off the field, but it was a close game. So I expect BYU to just go heavy on the ground game. And can SMU's defense step up and stop BYU's offensive line and the ground game? And can BYU slow SMU out of all? Yeah. Their offense just real good. You slow them down Concern. by not giving the SMU offense a yep. lot of opportunity to go and score. This is UAB last year, but there's no Baylor Romney or Tyler Algier. That's who's, concerning. Who's the running back that's going to save BYU? Can right? Chris People Brooks like, do what he did? Um, you know, he was at Hinkley Ropati a little bit, right? In the screen game, had the long run against Stanford. <sighs> This is UAB, minus yeah. Baylor but Spencer, and Tyler. BYU's had good performances from backup quarterbacks in bowl games. Have they? Tanner Mangum's backup performance in the Poinsettia Bowl. Those guys had was, played, no, no, had had no. snaps before. Yeah, Tanner, Tanner did not play well in the Poinsettia Bowl. Or BYU. Bowl. Jamal Williams had to run for 219 yards yes. for BYU to win we'll that game. We'll chronicle that later. Yeah, in Christian the top five Stewart. No, Christian Stewart started like six he, games. No, he started eight. Eight games. <laughs> <laughs> it was the whole rest of the season. <laughs> We are in huge trouble in this know. bowl game, and I am concerned. It's okay to be oh. real. Get healthy, Cade Fennigan. Get that ankle healthy. And BYU plays Utah. Just beat Arizona that day in basketball. Got to win that game, too. Hey, December 17th. Everybody clock in, man. Pressure. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I am stressed <laughs> now. Go. Speaking of, the transfer portal, topic two. Officially open. At least five BYU players have announced they're entering it. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you have to recruit your own players to stay as well as bring in others, add to your team. Here's Kalani Satake on the subject. The transfer portal, all that stuff's open for everybody, so I think that's kind of that's part of college football now, and, and we'll just have to deal with wh whoever comes and goes. It's just nowadays there's just way more. Back in the day when people transferred, uh, it's usually for, for, for uh, playing time, and now there's a, a lot more involved, so uh, that's all right. We'll just have to deal with it. So far, we've our focus in the transfer portal have been getting guys that fit our program, and I uh, can't really complain about the guys that we brought in. I think they've made an impact on and off the field for us. And so we'll keep trying to get the right guys in, in through the portal. But we also recruit from within first. You got to do it. So BYU, will they have more transfers coming in or out of the program? I have no idea. I feel like the number <laughs> will be really close. Like if BYU has eight guys leave, maybe they have six or seven come back in. It, yeah. The number is going to be really close. Yeah. I'm not so much concerned about the number of players coming back into BYU as I am about which positions are coming into BYU. I feel like BYU needs two quarterbacks. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that's realistic. They for sure have to have one, but I feel like they need to go get two quarterbacks in the transfer. Well, program. one can be Juco, who, who doesn't sure. expect to start per state, Come but in wants and compete. to compete for that. And be the backup. A fair point. Bring and in, bring in a Juco a guy. Yeah. Does a Juco guy count as a transfer portal guy, or is that a separate entity? I think Juco's different. Yeah. I, think. I feel like it's I different, too. It just is, it's a different beast. You're not leaving a school because you didn't like what you had there. You, like, you might you, have played two years ago. You go to done. Juco with the intention of using that leaving. as a trampoline to get up to a bigger program. Right. Yeah, Only so different beast. But, yeah, no, it's a fair point. Bring in a Juco mm -hmm. guy, but BYU has to get at least one quarterback in the transfer portal from another Division I program. And there well, are I would like it to be P5. There are apparently like 63 quarterbacks in the transfer portal right now. Let's go. 63? That's like an RM showing up at BYU, ready to date. So many quarterbacks And he goes available. to church that first Sunday. <laughs> got 63 options yeah, here. I don't, I don't care about the number. I care about who yes. and which positions BYU is getting Just into one. the transfer portal. The quarterback. All it takes is one. And a running back. Can BYU go and find somebody that will help alleviate the pressure that whoever the starting quarterback is will feel going into the Big 12? Yeah, you need a quarterback, running back, tandem. Yeah, maybe two running backs. It might backs be are two needed. because you go in with Hinkley, Rapazzi, and Miles Davis, and you feel okay about that, right? But I still want two guys. Unknown on Jackson McChesney's future. Been real banged up the last couple of years, unfortunately. When he's played, he's been awesome. Yeah, he can't stay healthy. But he can't stay healthy, which is which is tough. Um, okay, last year BYU had five P5 guys come mm -hmm. in. They've all contributed. Chris Brooks, yep. Cal, Kingsley Sumati, Oregon, Gabe Judy Lally, Vanderbilt, Houston Emily Stanford. Didn't contribute as much, but uh, we wanted him to, right? And then um, 
Sione Vicoso was a backup lineman from Arizona State who didn't really play. Perhaps he was redshirting. I, I haven't checked, but he may be in the mix for the top 10 next year. Those guys come in and make an impact, right? Um, and, and then BYU had other guys from Utah State, Snow, Tyler J.C., Weber State. that played a little bit. Logan Louis Tui, Lu, Lu Tui, the most on D-line. So there are impact transfers. In fact, had an interaction Sunday that some people enjoyed where someone said, well, what transfers have BYU brought in? And I was like, uh, Puka Nakua? Yeah, Puka Nakua, <laughs> most notably, um, the last couple of years. Like, what BYU really needs at running back is a Tyson Williams type who is looking for an opportunity, and if stays healthy, he would have he would have changed that season He's for BYU in 2019. He's an NFL running back. He's still with As the Cardinals speak, practice squad. He yeah. is an NFL running back. So right now five have exited. Not sure how many more will. Maybe a couple more. I, I don't know. Generally speaking, I wouldn't be worried, fan ba- Cougar Nation, BYU Sports Nation, that, that uh, BYU has uh, net, won the net you know, gain of this in the transfer portal over time, and that's all sports. BYU has brought in better and more than they've lost. Shaylee Gonzalez in women's basketball was the first real star to leave BYU. It's going to happen, though. It's free agency. You can sure. one-time transfer. It is what it is. Some people it's point okay. to Francis Bernard as a guy that BYU lost, and he was a contributor yeah. at Utah, and he went to the NFL. He was going to be lost regardless of because of off-the-field activity. Yes. It wasn't different, a, different I just don't want to play here. There was going to be an issue regardless, and there was a lot behind the scenes associated with that. We wait to see what happens with Dallin Holker, right? Maybe Dallin Holker is another of those guys that blooms somewhere else perhaps right yes and at at the time of their leaving they left and didn't weren't, weren't like a big name like Dallin Holker right now is a backup really good player I wish Dallin would stay but no he's out so yeah we'll see if there's somebody but I I think generally speaking um BYU has always kind of won the transfer portal if you will so I'm I'm not super concerned about kind of who's left at this point um certainly would love to have some of those guys a little surprised by Taint Romney going. It's like, hey, you're Romney. You, you guys play here, right? It's like seeing Devin Kafusi win the Pac-12 with Utah. It's like, hey, you, you're a Kafu- I thought Kafusi went here. But you can go wherever. It's, it's, uh, it is what it is, uh, and I accept that. Yeah, the number, TBD. But I feel like it'll be close, okay? Let's six or seven leave, six or seven enter back into BYU, fine. But who do you get? Yes, At and the can there be... And running back positions. We'll address this more another day, but real quick. Besides quarterback and running back, what does BYU need, in your opinion, from the transfer portal? Like, impact dudes. Defensive position. linemen. Agreed. Defensive linemen. Defensive linemen. linemen. Uh, yes. That is the next chapter in BYU football story, and we talked about it, what, a week ago or two, is where are the NFL defensive linemen not named Kairos Tonga? Where are they? Which, by the way, uh, I Ky- wish I Kyrus had an answer for you. Down. Where are they? Well, they've gone to Utah uh, quite a bit. The, some of the guys that BYU would have gotten in the past, for whatever reason, they went to Utah. Yeah, they're going to other Pac-12 schools like USC yeah. and... Stanford, shout out John Nua. <laughs> can, can, nice. Can, um, DC candidate, um, can BYU get those D linemen? Because I've never really been concerned about the backers. Secondary has been better the last couple of years than, than in years past, which has been nice. Uh, but a little thin at certain positions with depth this year, especially at safety. Uh, that was an issue. So, yeah, where, where are those guys? Not concerned. Again, I, shout out to Brady Fanger for this take because it's one of the best takes that we've ever heard. <laughs> BYU can recruit the mountain men, okay? It's the linebacker, yes. tight end, O-line types. That, like, physical position and body type, BYU's always been good at that. You, you combine sort of the Intermountain West combination with great Polynesian culture here. Boom! Those three, always good. I would add quarterbacks, always been good yes. here, of course. Yep, I was just going to say. BYU's always had a capable running back as well. Rarely does, is BYU inept at that position. Receivers right now really strong, by the way. We didn't bring that up. Going into next year, feel great about Keanu Hill and uh, Chase Roberts and Braden Cosper and Cody Epps. I think those four, really strong group returning. Um, that's assuming Puka goes. If Puka comes back, I'm like, hey, we stack up with the top yeah. five in the new 14-team Big 12. bring back an all-American caliber receiver if Puka Nakua comes back. But, again, I don't think he's coming back. Yeah. I, I, like, we're, we're not um, on the same opinion as A-Rod where it's like, hey, you know who we don't think is coming back? Jaron Hall, Puka Nakua, Clark Barrington, and Blake Freeland. Yeah. I just assume they're all they're gone. Like all four of and those now guys. we know Gunner's gone, basically, from, yes. from uh, Jenny's uh, tweet there. So that's tough, man. All right, our question of the day is this. What are your expectations for BYU in the bowl game if Jaron Hall cannot play? And again, 
I'm already going there to protect myself, my emotions, And if my he can't play, is he going to be that effective? That's another great question. How effective would he be if he does play? And is it worth it to him to play uh, super injured? I, he played through everything he possibly could this year. He left NFL scouts with a really, really good taste in the last three games that he played against Boise State, Utah Tech, and State. Once that shoulder got better. Yes. Yes. Like and, he, it, and it helped to play uh, three winnable teams, right? For sure. For and sure. Boise, Granted, Boise, Boise State, State a was a team. tough game. Yeah, good yep. team, good road Lost win. Lost the Mountain West Conference Championship, but, like, got to the tight Jaron yeah. went for, what, 400-plus total yards in that Boise State game? That was one of his best games of the 450? season. 450? 450-plus in that Boise State game. Fantastic. An incredible performance there, right? So, yeah, he's done, he's done his part. I don't know that he has anything else to do. He's, like, putting his time. Do. He's going to be honorably discharged I would, as BYU quarterback. Yeah, if he's healthy, yes, <laughs> playing the bowl game so that you can say that you played in a bowl game for BYU. But he's not. I don't not. think he's a box checker like that, though. He's not healthy. Yeah, I, I think he's like, well, I'm going to hurt us, maybe. He's like, good. If he's he's not, good. Like, he's going to be a mid-round pick right now. And he'll, he's going to have an awesome pro day. He's going to run a really fast time. He's going to be agile. He's going to make great throws. Assuming his ankle's good. John Beck's going to get him healthy. Like, yes, he's going to have a great pro day. Uh, so I don't know what Jaron John has Beck's to a physical gain. therapist now? Well, what I mean, in the world? Jer you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, John's going to work with him. It's, it's, yes. it's going to be good. But he's, he's got to get the ankle and the shoulder as, as good as possible. For All right. Day. Okay, you've heard our expectations. At Kuzco Boy Answers and no. Voice of the Nation. His expectations are Puka oh, in wildcat formation. <laughs> Listen, he's, he's a baller. You want to get to the ball? But if it's a bunch of that, there was a time, by the way, in the past where Kainakua was training at quarterback because of how thin BYU um, was. Yes. In what was it, 2015, maybe? I'm trying to remember. There was, there was a time there where Kai was practicing at quarterback. I kid you not. He played quarterback in high school. Hashtag BYUSN to join that conversation. Oh okay, tonight, BYU basketball with Mark Pope. Discuss what's going on with the Cougar Hoops. Uh, ahead of the Utah Valley game tomorrow, Cahill Finnell breaks it down in the film room. 8.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app. If you want to show up, go to uh, Eventbrite and uh, search Mark Pope. And what can BYU fans and players expect in Albuquerque? The executive director of the bowl game joins us next to reveal what you can expect between the Cougars and Mustangs and all of the events leading up. This is BYU Sports Nation. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. You won $50,000! What do you think we should do with the money? How many of your layaways include toys? I want to pay them all off. No child should wake up on Christmas morning without a toy. Just tell them it was an elf named Lucky. You don't give people gifts because you expect something back. You give them gifts because the gift keeps going and going, and someday it comes back to you bigger than it was before. Just like Lucky the elf. This is BYU Sports Nation. Snap it in. Let's go. Let's go. Interact with the show. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jeremiah Spencer. Let's call an audible. And whip it early. 
Cobra Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. There's a report about uh, Ed Lamb perhaps taking the job at Northern Colorado from Brady Hole at Hole Show, host of okay. radio show in Greeley, Colorado, home of Northern Colorado. Hearing Ed Lamb, currently with BYU, is going to be the next North, uh, Northern Colorado coach. Lamb was head coach of Southern Utah from 08 to 15. Loads of college football yes. experience, including a Big Sky Conference title and NCAA playoffs appearance. Yeah. What's your reaction? My reaction is, Northern Colorado, you're very lucky. Ed Lamb took a terrible program in Southern Utah and turned it into a Big Sky champion. Like, the Bears, you should feel, and Greeley, I believe it is, right? Mm -hmm. Shout out to Greeley, Colorado. You are getting... A, a guy that needs to be a head football coach. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. Now, we don't have a report that Ed Lamb has been dismissed from the BYU coaching staff, per se, but it is common that coaches get other jobs. Um, and, and perhaps, you know, Elias Tuiaki's name being thrown out there with Idaho State as well. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, Ed Lamb, with, good, for, with these good guys. for Northern Colorado. That'd be a great hire for them. Certainly, uh, Jay Hill from Weber State's name has been mentioned as a possibility as Ed's uh, replacement at BYU. We'll see if he or someone else is the guy there should this be the case but that is a report that's out and i agree with you ed yeah. is an awesome coach he needs to be a head coach he's been fantastic here uh as an assistant head coach if this is indeed the case best of luck to ed we'll see what happens he's gonna clean up a program that's in a mess like, it's, it's another messy program in the big sky like he's i couldn't tell you a thing about them want, other than they're the bears they want him to do what he did with southern utah yeah and, and he's familiar the with the conference, with the yes. recruiting, FCS, all that. Well yeah. done. If that's if this is the case, congratulations to Ed getting another head coaching job. Okay, Taysom Mill scored his eighth touchdown of the season last night. Will he have double digit by the end of the year? Probably. He's too much of a gimmick red zone touchdown type player. Like, if they're inside the 10-yard line or inside the 5-yard line and you just throw Taysom Hill back in that little pistol formation, NFL defenses can't seem to stop that. So, yeah, there will be enough scenarios moving forward in the weeks remaining for the Saints, who are 4-9 and nine now, yikes, that they're going to run Taysom Hill, and he's going to score at least two more touchdowns. Uh, they have a bye week, then the Falcons, Browns, Eagles, Panthers. There are two touchdowns. Oh, my there. gosh, yeah. yes. If the Panthers are involved, absolutely. <laughs> and the As Falcons haven't been, they haven't been great. Uh, yeah, opportunities there. Jersey swap. How about this? SMU BYU bowl game over under is set at 74 and a half points. Do they do they know Jaron thing up? <laughs> like, I like, they did. Does that number <laughs> go way down? Yeah, if it probably if should. Doesn't it play? probably should. Or he's hampered because he again, certainly is hindered. Similar line between BYU and ECU going into that game, and it was 51. Way under. It was 51. Oh, 74 okay. and a half, so high. Yeah, right, it's so many points. That's yeah. like a 44 the, to 30 type. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. That even wouldn't even cover. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's 41 35 ish. Yeah. That's a lot of points when you have an injured quarterback yes. on the BYU side. Taking the under hard. Yeah. I, I, I would too. Hey, listen. I hope it doesn't happen, but honestly, there's a chance SMU goes 50 plus. Do you, and BYU puts it up do you want this game to be 70 plus? No. Neither do I. I. I agree with your take of what this needs to be is the ECU. Yes. Yes. It needs to be in the 20s. Like, if that's a, like can BYU score 28 points without Jaron Hall? I am concerned, legitimately. Just because we don't know what Cade Fennigan can do, and we know Cade's hurt. If Built Bar number, Built Bar's number one employee, Nick Billups, plays, we just haven't seen Nick. It's hard to be like, yep, you're always going to score 28. Like, why would we expect that? Yeah, well, people are like, well, what about the defense? They could create some. No, we have, like, Max Tooley. Max Tooley, Max Tooley play? He's, the only, he's the only guy that's created defensive points this year. Yeah. yeah. Is he going to play? Yeah. No, I don't want 70 plus. I want, like, 55 points. Okay. Slow it down. Okay, 12 of the new uh, 14 teams in the Big 12 next year playing in a bowl game. Way too early projection. How many B uh, Big 12 teams will make a bowl game next year? Ooh. I mean, between because there are four ACs, or three AAC teams and BYU, like, you can't expect, like, 12 of the 14 once they get into the Big 12 to make another bowl game. By the way, they only have, like, six bowl games plus, like, two flex games. How are they going to accommodate everybody if there's 10? Typically, there's some other conferences are really bad and they yeah. can't get enough bowl eligible teams. So That's true. They're short of the total yes. number this year. The five and sevens. I'm going to set it work. at nine. Nine teams next year, I think, get to at least six wins. I'll go 10. Just to nine out of 14? Yeah, well, 10 out of 14. Okay. 10, yeah. All right. And why not? But 12, no. 12 is way too much. Hopefully, BYU is one of those. BYU women's basketball coming off a, a nice win at Boise State. Yep. 
Are they beginning the toughest three game stretch of the season tonight at Utah State and then Utah who's really good looming on Saturday. Yes because they don't play two ranked teams in a row like they're going to do with 15th ranked Utah who's awesome this year and 22nd ranked Gonzaga. Yeah. And it's at Gonzaga. <laughs> That's going to be a tough stretch. Though. Yes I don't I don't see it. What, where are you going to find a tougher stretch than two ranked teams the, back to back? The very end of the season at San Fran, home Portland, home Gonzaga is tough, but it's not as That's tough, not as, as, tough as this. Yeah, for sure. Okay, coming up tomorrow night, listen to BYU Radio as the Cougars and men's hoops take on Utah Valley. Cougar pregame live gets going at 8 Eastern time. And the executive director of the New Mexico Bowl, Jeff Simbieta, will join us next to tell us what BYU fans can expect when they make their way to the land of enchantment. Stay with us on BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From accidents to wills, from bankruptcy to business law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. You keep Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine. I have been sent to warn you and to offer you a hope and chance of escaping my fate. You will be haunted by three spirits. Thank you, spirit. I will keep my promise. I will live in the past, present, and the future. The spirits of all three will strive within me. Oh, heaven and Christmas time be prayed for this. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. It is our privilege now to welcome in the executive director of the New Mexico Bowl. His name is Jeff Simbieta. Jeff, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Great to be a part of the New Mexico Bowl. It's great to be part of BYU Sports Nation, boys. How you doing? Fantastic. Great. Yeah, I think we all kind of want an idea of what fans can expect as they prepare to head to the land of enchantment in Albuquerque in preparation for what looks to be a really, really fun matchup against SMU. Yeah, a good time in a good town, in a, in a good place. And I know old school BYU fans are certainly familiar with, with, uh, with Albuquerque after years and years and years of being in the same league, whether it was the WAC or the Mountain West with, with New Mexico. But uh, I think you'll expect great hospitality, wonderful people, and we'll see what the weather looks like. Just just getting a glimpse at the whatever it is, 11-day, 12-day, 10-day, whenever you get here. It looks like it's going to be clear and cool and nice, and then um, and great food, by the way, and oh, great yes. people. And when, and when we, yeah, there, there, there's nothing like New Mexican food. I'm not a native. I've been here 26 years, so I don't know at what point you're from somewhere. Uh, but there's nothing like New Mexican food. And and, uh, and and so eat the green chili and everything. I mean, your burritos and your pizza, whatever it is you have, like there's a recommendation for you. But um, I, I think when you get here, game day is going to be great. Uh, the, the atmosphere should be terrific with two teams that are finishing on such a high with great fan bases. And then um, the news yesterday that we did get moved into that prime time on ABC window. So there'll be a lot of eyes on this game. This, this is a pretty exciting one. 
Yeah, ABC, 5.30 uh, Mountain Time. That's going to be awesome, man. Um, I went to the New Mexico Bowl in 2010 against UTEP with BYU. I had a great experience, so I highly recommend it. Check it out. Talk to me about this matchup and able to, uh, to get an SMU team who comes in 5-2 and two since October 14th. The two lost to Cincinnati and Tulane. Respectable. BYU turned it around, and uh, they are bowl eligible as well. Yeah, no, I love the matchup, actually. And I, I, you know, we, we've had a lot of great games over there. This is our 17th game, and uh, we've had some terrific games. I don't know that we've ever had, well, there, there's been a lot of excitement. But going in, you know, when we hit Selection Sunday, to hit a matchup like this where everybody's kind of going, wow, okay, I, 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 I see what you're doing there. And that it, it's, it's something that's acceptable for primetime on ABC, which is really big. The matchup excel. I mean, I, I hear that everybody plays defense. I watch games, and, and it's funny. Kalani was on on my show this morning, and we were talking about SMU, and, and we talked about their offense, and, and Rashi Rice, and, and Mordecai, their 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 quarterback, and everything. And he says, "We haven't even talked. We're only talking about one phase of the game because it, it seems, guys, that's all anybody wants to talk about, right? <laughs> is is these two offenses? So I, everybody's telling me." Not that I would know about these things. Bet the over is what people tell, but I, I'm not endorsing <laughs> that by any means. Uh, but but it's it's it looks you know as we we look at matchups and I think one of the reasons that we've been able to have such great games over the years is is we've worked on putting matchups together. And uh, you look at th these two teams and the way they match up. You look at common opponents and they're really, there really there isn't a lot there. So w what do you look at and and you say okay. You know, Boise State was 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 a big turnaround for BYU season. They beat Baylor. They finished with beating Stanford. And then you look at what SMU did and the way they played TCU, who's in the playoff and played them really well. They scored 77 points against <laughs> Houston and won that game. Um, so, no, there's a, there's a lot of excitement around here. And I think as, as you guys look at it, I mean, you've got to love the matchup, don't you? Absolutely. We well, I love it and I hate it because I'm scared to death of that there, SMU offense. There is some trepidation for sure. There, there is legitimate trepidation. Jeff Simbieta, the executive who director. Play, me, me, who would you rather play? You want me to go change the match, Lucy? We can find for you. you want. I think I think we're good now at this at this point with that prime yeah. time spot. Okay, Jeff, when did BYU become a legitimate option for the New Mexico Bowl this year? I, I probably. I, I mean, they've always been on the radar. Um, you know, ESPN events owns our game as, as ESPN own, uh, events owns many of the of the games. And BYU had is, has a primary um, full tie-in with, with our games this year. And so when we started looking through the matchups potentially, and we probably start doing, well, I probably start looking in week one or two, right? But as, as they start having relatively formatted conversations a month ago, um, I, I made it very clear I want to be in, in consideration to host BYU again. I, I just, you know, I don't, I don't know a, when we're going to get that opportunity because we don't have a primary with the Big 12 moving forward. Um, the fan base here, there's there's quite a large BYU fan base here. And there's plenty of people, like somebody called my show today and said, I can't wait to go back out and boo BYU in person again. So <laughs> the, way, the way they resonate, yeah. well, you've never heard that before? What, what's the yuck, yuck, yuck? Oh, you never heard that before, right? Oh, we're, we're very used to it. That's why it's very, funny. Very yeah, I, know aware. I know it's a well, basketball thing, but maybe it was Snake who called into the show. <sighs> It might have been Snake who, who said that, but I, I, they've been on the radar because I, I, I kind of, you know, made it known that I, I would like to host BYU here. And, and, and then as the conversation started happening over, over the weeks and the potential of this, uh, the flex into ABC, um, this was all contingent. For those who don't know, it was all contingent on a Raiders-Patriots game actually in Vegas being flexed out of the primetime NBC window, which backed them up into an afternoon window, which created an issue in regards to flipping Allegiant Stadium for the Vegas Bowl. And so the Las Vegas Bowl and, and us switched windows and networks. And so that when that became a, a potential, um, I think the conversation became more real. Lots of dominoes, uh, for sure. We're talking to... Uh... It's easy. We're talking about the New Mexico Bowl here. And uh, in this matchup, it's interesting because SMU comes in hot, as we mentioned. Jaron Hall's health is certainly a concern for BYU. We were talking about that. And last year, it certainly swayed BYU's game. But in terms of uh, stars in this game and NFL prospects, feels like there's a bunch. We've got some of the nation's best in several categories. Who kind of sticks out for you in terms of what we're going to see in this game? I mean, there's I mean, both both sides of the ball and both both teams. Um, I, you know, the easy one is when you say Rasheed Rice, right? I mean, yep. the, the he was the number one receiver in the nation. Uh, the young man from Purdue, I think he's got it by six yards because he played the championship game. But I look at both sides of the ball and I I, I start looking at okay, it, you know, it, it's kind of weird how um, 
how this works. Uh, you know, I've been doing this game 17 years. And I, I watched guys with the Cowboys game the other night, uh, the, the uh, Sunday night game, four touchdowns, Michael Gallup and um, uh, the young man on defense. Why am I forgetting his name? Played for Fresno State last year, had two touchdowns. Four of those guys were New Mexico Bowl alum. And we start looking around and and I, I almost like proud dad, you know, not that I, did, I didn't do a daggum thing, right? All I did was host him at a bowl game. But we've had a hundred and I want to say the numbers, we, we got it written down. Ryan's probably got 180 something players in the 17 years who have come through here and, and had some sort of an NFL career. And so you start looking at the prospects, you get excited. But, you know, some of the, some of the greatest moments we've had, too. Guys are, are, are guys who are not NFL players who have played. Maybe it was their last game or one of their last games or, or, or a bowl game where they stood out as a freshman. And um, it, it, it's it's crazy how bowl games and college athletics and athletics in general tell stories, right? Because guys sometimes make legends in the postseason. You know, I, I know you have, and I've looked back at the 1980 Holiday Bowl, the SMU BYU game, the Jim McMahon game, and. I remember that um, I wasn't at that game, but I, I remember the reward that I spent eight years in San Diego and, and that was always talked about and, and kind of crazy. Um, I don't know if you knew this and Ryan just told me this the other day, the New Mexico bowl will book and BYU's independence, meaning yeah. yes. they played their last game as a member of the mountain West conference in this game. And they will play their last game as an independent before going to the big 12 here. I don't mean anything necessarily. It was just kind of an odd fact that hit me. Jeff Simbieta is the executive director of the New Mexico Bowl. We cannot wait to get down there and, yes, experience the food, but the build up to what, what hopes to be just a fantastic game. We appreciate the time, and uh, we'll see you in New Mexico very soon. Spencer, Germs, safe travels. Look forward to having you down here and uh, enjoy the hospitality. Reach out to me if there's anything I could do for you. But I, uh, my, here's one thing I know. We'll throw a good party for y'all. Yeah. BYU fans are going to have a great experience down here. I know it's been a minute since many of y'all have been down here. Uh, but come down. We, we, we you know, Over 17 years, I, I know who we are. We're no, I know who we're not. I told Tom Homo that the other day. <laughs> but one thing I, I, I control is how we take care of people. And, and uh, we're going we're gonna to make sure those student athletes and their families and their families and this fan base is treated like they deserve to be treated and uh, has a great time down here. So safe travels and appreciate you spending some time with me. Fantastic. Thanks, Looking Joe. forward to it. You can leave a little bowl swag on the side for us if you'd like to as well. <laughs> we, we won't say no to that. Give me your sizes, boys. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Simbieta, the executive director of the New Mexico Bowl on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, yeah, bit, a bit of news, by the way. Logan Fano oh, oh, just posting. Just let's save it. Let's save it for the, let's save it for the break. Should we tease it? Should we push it forward? No, because I just said his name, but okay. <laughs> Men's Hoops host Utah Valley tomorrow night. Big game coming up after the South Dakota loss. How does that his name? I know. Uh, watch Trying to game. mask it. 8 Eastern. Why, why mask it? No, we start our fantasy basketball season with our draft. And yes, another BYU Cougar announces he's entering the transfer portal. Oh, because it was your tease. I get Not it. Not gonna now. lie, this I one's gonna, this one's gonna sting. I get it. This is BYU Sports Nation. Of the guy whose name I just said. Mm -hmm. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. 
I was four years old when I left Zambia. My dad was born in Shila, in the south of Italy. My mom is from Slovakia. We haven't really talked about it, never, not once. My dad doesn't really talk about his life in Serbia. I just really want to know who he is. And then discover who am I. <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from Studio B. Yes, it is almost time for our 2022 BYU Sports Nation Fantasy Basketball Draft. Yeah. and you got, you're, We're almost there. You're going to have a shot. You're going to have a shot here. But first. <laughs> <laughs> I have a shot in the bowl game if Sharon Hall doesn't play. It's very true. That is Jeez. very true. You could ruin the perfect record. Uh, but first, some more football news. And uh, BYU fans are not going to like this. Logan Fano, who tore his ACL in the spring, was going to be a star for BYU perhaps in the, in the future. He was a big get when BYU oh. signed him. He tweeted moments ago, I want to thank BYU for the lessons I've learned, the presents I've made. After a lot of prayer and careful consideration, I've decided to enter the transfer portal. Uh, his uh, brother was in the mix uh, for BYU for next year. Um, apparently didn't have a good experience or something happened where Logan's leaving as well. So that, that is a bummer. I was excited about Logan Funnel. He is the sixth player yeah. in the portal from BYU. Just for reference, Colorado State has 23. Alabama and Oregon have 19. So there are teams that are really good, not Colorado State, that are dealing with this too. It's... It is what it is. Like, to be surprised, Drake May from North Carolina, perhaps the number one pick in the draft next year, he is in the portal. Like, even top end guys go to the portal. Yes. And, and Logan Caleb is, Williams might win the Heisman. He went last year in the portal, the USA. Followed his coach. We were just talking about how BYU needs defensive linemen. Logan Fano, we expected to be a key defensive yeah. lineman. So that one's a bummer. It hurts. There's no way around it. That one hurts. That one hurts. Yeah. There's some sure. that don't hurt at all. You, you were hoping. Oh, There's man. some that don't hurt at all. That one hurts. And we wish the best for Logan. You know? May, maybe he goes out and peruses. Unless he goes to Utah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you want to hold I out kid. hope, it's like maybe, maybe he peruses around. And sometimes guys go into the portal and come back. Like we'll, but yeah, uh, Chris Jackson did that last year. Exactly, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. All right, on to our BYU Sports Nation 2022 Fantasy Basketball Draft. Now this is unique. I like this setup a lot. We're including multiple teams. Me too. Teams. I like it way better We're than the football one. Including multiple teams, and even the opponents to a degree. Yeah. Okay. In okay, fact, here, here's how it works. Break it down. So we're gonna draft two players from the BYU men's team, two from the women's team, no bench. Okay, and then each week we'll draft a player from a BYU opponent. Mm -hmm. And you just count the points from that one game against BYU for them. Okay. Men or women. Okay, to round out our starting five. The loser from the previous week, loser, mm -hmm. will have the first waiver wire option and you can pick up whoever. Okay, no bench. No, we have zero bench. Zero bench. This is, that makes it interesting. Zero Zero bench. I'm trying to think of a joke here. <laughs> so here we go. Yeah. And one point will be scored for every point, assist, rebound, block, and steals. Parbs. Parbs we, is we what we call it call internally. It. Yep, yeah, parbs. parbs. Yep. Uh, no, there's no penalty for turnovers. Yes. And Look, with the men's team from BYU, that's a great thing. <laughs> Jerem, uh, you have earned in every way, shape, and form the first pick. Yes, yes I have. <laughs> okay. Yes, I have. Draft. And I pick. Easy, the easiest pick all year, Lauren Gustin. Yeah. She is a machine. Parbs average, 34.2 right now. Yep. She is a monster. I dare say the Jaron Hall of basketball here. Uh, Jerem, she's had a double-double in all eight games yeah, this year. Yeah, I expect her to have a double-double for the rest of her life. Yeah, that, that is the appropriate number one pick. With the number two pick in the 2022 BYU Sports Stage Fantasy Basketball Draft, I select Gideon George. Okay, he was uh, fifth on my big board. I am I'm going, Gideon George is my guy because okay. he has the capability to do a lot of different things. I expect him to be better. He's a good rebounder. Yep. He's a good defender. Yep. He scores in double figures. Yep. He plays. He's my hustle guy. Let's go. He's my number one pick. All right, who's your number two pick? Okay, I'm going with my number three on the big board. I go with Foose because I'm going points and boards mm -hmm. mainly, okay? Foose. You're going the double-double tandem there. Yeah. Right? Love it. Foose is another double-double guy. good about that. My number two pick, Nani Falatea. Number two BYU on my big women's board. basketball. Okay, number uh, two, number three pick, 
Number two men's player, Rudy Williams. Okay. Let's go, Rudy. Okay. So you got, hey, that's a solid team. I'm proud. I'm like proud it. of you. I like it. You're doing some nice things. Let's go. My third pick, I'm gonna go women's basketball heavy here. Rose Bubakar yep. is my number three pick. Yep. Another player that does a lot of different things. Number three on the women's big board for me. I go with my number four on the women's big board. Uh, Kaylee Smila. Okay. She is fantastic. Yes. Fantastic Excellent person three point too. shooter. She's great. Really, really solid defender. Okay. My fourth pick from BYU men's basketball, he shares my name, Spencer Johnson. Oh. Yep. Really? Yes. You think he's playing soon? I think he's going to play soon. Oh. Yeah. Is this breaking news? <laughs> this, I thought he was out for a while. Uh, that's great. Okay, now we go to the opponents. So, uh, I go with Ryan Kalkbrenner of Creighton. Dude's putting up 26.6 parbs. Oh, I, I wasn't aware that we had to make that pick today. I thought it was just the BYU basketball oh. players. Oh. Okay. Well, I, I got my uh, I got my pick there, so you can have the scraps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got who you wanted. Right? Yes. Okay. You'll you'll add yours. Oh, TBD. I'll add my TBD. TBD. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. If you go Utah State women's, you got to add it um, in the next 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, don't, not, they, don't they play at 11? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to do well, that. Well, you could have gone <laughs> could have gone with Maria Carvalho. She was third on my uh, opponent big board. Yeah, I'm going to go with somebody from the University of Utah and their women's basketball team. Okay. Yeah. That's your, you know what? I uh, chose to not do Utah on purpose no matter what. Uh, really? In this game, I refuse to do you a Utah player. You will not do it? I will do not it? do a Utah player because then wow. I have to root for said Utah I, player. <laughs> you, can, you can root for that player to have... To do what they on average do, but still lose the game. No. No, it's not a Fred Warner situation. No. No, it's not. Double double machine and the first overall pick, Lauren Gustin. And hey, there's Nani Falate and the Cougars. Host number 15, Utah, Saturday, 7 Eastern, right here on BYU TV. Up next, top five bowl wins of the independence era. There have been five. We're ranking them all. Mm -hmm. This is BYU Sports Nation. Who's won? BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Now I'm living in paradise. Merry Christmas, baby. You sure been good to me. Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, All the way home, I'll be warm. It's Christmas every day of the year. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine, be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio apps or listen to the podcast, subscribe, rate, and review. It's time for Top 5 Tuesday and to honor BYU heading to their final bowl game in the Independence Era. We are going with the Top 5 Bowl Game wins in the Independence Era. Start us off, Jerem. Number 5, 2016 versus Wyoming. Poinsettia Bowl. The Cougars won 24-21 thanks to Jamal Williams. 210 yards and a touchdown. Tanner Mangum threw for 96 yards 
and a touchdown pass, which is more like a Hail Mary, and a run against Buffalo Bills star Josh Allen, who threw a pick to Kainakua to seal the BYU win in the final poinsettia bowl, making the Cougars forever yes. poinsettia bowl forever champs. Forever champs. Number four to the 2018 Idaho Potato Bowl, the Zach Wilson perfection game. 18 for 18, 317 yards, four touchdown passes, leading BYU to an overwhelming 49-18 win against Western Michigan. Wilson tied the NCAA bowl record for completion percentage and a BYU bowl game record with four passing touchdowns. The Cougars trailed at halftime. What? I forgot. 10 to 7. We've never mentioned this. 18 for 18 in 18. It's perfection. Unbelievable. Number three, 2011 Armed Forces Bowl versus Tulsa. BYU's first bowl as an independent team. The Cougars trailed with 11 seconds to go, down four. Riley Nelson called for a fake spike. The play call was called red alert and threw the game winner to Cody Hoffman right here for his third TD catch of the day and the 24-21 win. At number two, 2012 Poinsettia Bowl in San Diego against San Diego State. Following three touchdownless quarters, Kyle Van Noy decided to just take things over himself. <laughs> so yeah, good. scored twice, recovering the fumble for his first of two touchdowns, had a pick six as well. Jamal Williams got into the end zone. All of a sudden, BYU dominates 23-6 over the Aztecs. And number one, the top BYU bowl win in Independence, 2020 Boca Raton Bowl versus UCF. Cougars won going away 49-23, completing an 11-1 season led by Zach Wilson, who threw for 425 yards and five touchdowns, three passing. Tyler Algier ran for 173 and a score. It's also BYU's first win in the state of Florida in school history and had that diving catch by yes. Lopini Couture. Yes, incredible highlights, incredible performance, and it snapped the Florida skid. Yes, it did. 11 win it season. It helps when you incredible. play a team not o named Ohio State. Your quarterback goes 400 plus and you have Algier run for almost 175. It was amazing. <laughs> it was a poor on night. Oh, my god. Dylan goodness. Gabriel, the uh, that, quarterback in that yeah, one. Yeah, well, oh. well, Zach greater than Dylan that, that, that night, that's for sure. For college. Our question of the day, what are your expectations for BYU in the bowl game if the quarterback, Jaron Hall, can't play? Our elite voice of the day, presented by PAX, Healthcare Elevated, comes in from Kevin Riedler on Facebook. He says, expectations? The Taysom Hill comes back for an extra game, runs for two touchdowns, extra throws for game. three, catches one. From Hinkley Ropati, no less, and has a tackle slash fumble recovery on special teams. That's wow. just the craziest take I've ever heard yeah, in my life, wow. and I'm questioning who decided that one for the elite. <laughs> Kevin, love you. Not the elite voice, though. Come on, man. Uh, today's <laughs> Rise and Shout Out, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's give it to the number one overall pick in our fantasy basketball draft. Lauren Gustin, WCC Co-Player of the Week. She's playing great ball, really fun to watch. If you love rebounding, you love watching Lauren Gustin. Our Thanks to today's guest, Jeff Simbieta, the executive director of the New Mexico Bowl. Sorry to Dennis Pitter, ran out of time. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. And uh, go to BYUSN.com for all shows and, and games on demand. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. A shout-out to Margin Hooks. He got a touchdown against SMU his first. Yes, he did. We'll see you tomorrow back here in Studio B. Go Cougs. Morocco!